Hello folks and welcome to Linux for Seniors. Uh, this is, uh, uh, if you haven't seen any of my videos, this is my second uh, YouTube project in the last four years. Uh, my previous one I had over 400 videos. So Linux for Seniors, well Linux is for everyone, but um, I'm, my target audience uh, or videos, I'm going to slow down a little bit and explain things a little bit uh, more in detail. So none of my videos will be less than two minutes. You know, I've seen plenty of those two-minute videos on any product or any subject matter on YouTube, and normally you can't squeeze in a lot of information in two minutes. So just be aware of that. So I highly suggest you subscribe. That way you can start watching it uh, today. Hit stop, come back tomorrow, watch the uh, where you left off, keep watching it, uh, or even do a third session and watch part of it next week. You also have access to my growing library of videos, which, uh, like I said, on my previous channel was over 400. And uh, I just started this channel less than two weeks ago, and I think I'm up to like 10 or 12. So let's move on, and welcome to Linux for Seniors. So I have a camera turned on, and I'm going to talk about RAM today for this distribution. So um, I also have some samples down here, so I'll wave hello. This fancy mouse pointer, I'll also talk about in later videos, how to put one of these fancy mouse pointers and usually within 30 seconds. But that's another video for another day. So if you are, um, let me bring the camera back online. And um, if you're wanting to know more information regarding your motherboard, you know, these uh, RAM fits in here and you need to know the RAM is right here in these red chips. Uh, and you need to know what kind of RAM to go purchase if you're going to do this. And putting in RAM is pretty easy. And for the most part, to get into your BIOS, your basic input operating system, it's usually point and click. It'll tell you about uh, memory types that uh, if you're upgrading, for instance. Some of them are called XMP tabs or memory type of tabs. And you just need to check to see what kind of RAM you have what kind of speed, and a lot of these motherboards will accept different speeds. But we need to know some basic information before we even go purchase these things. So I'm going to give you lots of tips and uh, go slowly today. So let's start with something that people normally shy, with, uh, shy away from, but I'm going to point this out that it could be a wealth of information to you. If you are using, uh, I'll just give you the example of some other distributions, Ubuntu-based distributions or Debian-based. Some of those distributions in their software managers have a graphical tool called Hard Info or System Profiler and Benchmark. But you can really get the same information by using this command on any Linux distribution. So let me display that for you. You can even do this on a laptop, I believe on any Linux distro, I-N-X-I space dash, usually the dash is next to your plus key on your keyboard, big F, in other words, uppercase F, X-Z. So the dash F-Z is dash F-X-Z is just a switch, as they call it. A lot of people have different type of switches on the I-N-X-I command. This one here does not display personal information, but will give me a wealth of information. And there you have it. So I'm going to scroll to the top and I'm going to do two things at the same time. First of all, we're going to talk about the distribution. And you probably clicked on the thumbnail and you know that's Manjaro, but I thought I'd point it out anyways. This is a KDE Plasma desktop. I'm trying to highlight that for you. But anyways, it gives me the kernel name. But more importantly, when I move to the machine part, M-O-B-O, -O, motherboard, there is the information I need to go purchase some RAM. My motherboard on this machine is a MicroStar MPGB 550 Gaming Plus with that code name of MS7C56. Now that I'm armed with this information, and you can also copy this, open up your web browser and go search for the manual for this thing so you can find out what type of RAM to go buy at the store. Now, you may have heard these buzzwords called DDR3, DDR4. Wouldn't it be beneficial to you to know what type your motherboard uses? What kind of speed? Is it a 1600? Is it a 3200 or some other derivative? Well, that's why we use information like this. 
you find out what type of motherboard, what the model number is, you should be able to find a manual online that'll tell you all the particulars on your motherboard. But more importantly, you look for the specific of information that says, what type of RAM does my motherboard use? So there's also a different way of finding this out in case you don't want to use terminal for this distribution, or at least part of that information. And that is to open up your quick settings, system settings, and scroll to the bottom and click about. So that MS7C56 is that same information I just gave you over here. That represents that number right there, and you can see it's MicroStar. This gives you more information, though, I, I think. But you don't have to install anything on this distribution. Just punch in INXI. On some Linux distribution, you have to install INXI. When you try to perform that, it actually tells you how to install it in most terminals. You can also have other information here with that same command. CPU, graphics card, audio, network card, Bluetooth. It tells me what kind of camera I'm using to display that thing for you. It's a Logitech Brio. My internal hard drives, I have lots of them. So for this computer here that I'm filming from, just to let you see that I have some internal hard drives. So uh, I normally have lots of computers. So at all times at my desk, I usually have two of them. And they have several hard drives each. So the one I have over here that is uh, currently unplugged. And please, anytime you decide to do any kind of work on your computer, please unplug these things. Otherwise, you'll damage the components. But let's, now let's talk about this thing. So I'm going to pull it out of the box because this is very reflective. And I don't have the best camera equipment in the world, folks. I'm working off of a budget, so just bear with me. So here's a typical um, stick. And it has a notch on it. And that's very important to, uh, to understand. So we have, grabbing my pen, we have four of these in here. Normally, when you buy them as a set, if you're buying two of these, you would install one like here and one like here. You can look at your motherboard information online to find out what slots they should normally go into. But a lot of your motherboards, you'll plug in one stick here, skip a space, and plug in the other one. They're called uh, channels. That's not important, though. If you buy four, obviously, you just put in the four. But a lot of times, you want to buy either one if that's all you can afford. But don't do this this way. So I know this is a set. So think about it this way. If you are wanting to buy eight gigabytes, but let's say your budget doesn't allow you to buy that this week. So you go ahead and you purchase this week one stick of the same thing. You go buy this uh, next week on Amazon or Best Buy or your favorite electronic store. Don't do that. My recommendation is to buy them in sets because of compatibility issues. It doesn't matter, matter the manufacturer, because I've seen this before. I've had the same experience, actually. So now I buy all my RAM for all my computers in sets. So whether you want to think about it this way, 4 and 4 makes 8, or 8 and 8 is 16, you get the idea. Or you can just buy four of these as a set. Uh, RAM is getting fairly cheap. So um, I, I'm saying fairly cheap, um, usually under $100 for like um, 8 or 16 or even 32 gigabytes is pretty standard. But buy them as a set. Um, you can go and buy brand names. Uh, so Kingston is another one. Um, there's a lot of different ones. You can do some reading. You can go to Amazon, look some of the ratings. Not that all of them are honest, but look at some of the ratings and do some of your research online also for using a web browser and your favorite search engine. But uh, more importantly, when you do this yourself, be aware of that notch. So um, I'm going to dislodge this on purpose. So there's little tabs over here. And usually there's tabs on the bottom also. So basically, um, some of these motherboards, one side will be fixed and the other ones are release. This is now lodged, dislodged a little bit. But uh, normally, if that's the type of motherboard you have that have the fixed ones, then I, I would say put it in kind of like the caddy wampus. You know, you kind of slide it in there. I don't mean, you know, at a severe angle, just slightly. But 
Don't forget, they only go in one way. It's a good thing. And don't forget to snap these things in. You make sure that they're locked before you fire that power cord up. All right, so again, if you're planning on putting uh, RAM into your machine, your laptops will be a little bit different, but you can certainly use that terminal command to determine what you have in the box, what you have in your console computer. So RAM is fairly easy to uh, replace. A lot of people will ask, well, isn't it hard to go through and install RAM? No, it's not. But a lot of your motherboards will also complain as soon as you change your RAM and it'll uh, either boot into your basic input operating system or BIOS, or you can go into your BIOS yourself. Normally it's something like hitting the delete key on your keyboard or F2 or something similar. And then go find the, uh, and a lot of these BIOS are also um, basic input operating system are also graphical. So you can go click and find your memory section and then go find out what kind of speed your, your, your RAM is. Because a lot of these motherboards, you can adjust the speeds on them. A lot of them are printed and some of them are not. But your packaging, when you purchase these things, normally you are purchasing, I'll give you an example, like a DDR4 or DDR3, 1600 or 32. So you need to match that up in your motherboard. So these things, and, uh, and some of these also come with like auto detection. So you don't really have to worry too much about it. But a lot of times when you have auto detection, it picks the lower end. So if you are into uh, well, speed, you may want to check that setting. And a lot of times when you boot into the BIOS, it'll actually tell you what the RAM is running currently, speed wise. All right. So with that said, you can go buy these things at Amazon.com, Best Buys, or your favorite electronics store. And... Um, so if you're curious, I'll point out some of the components inside of the average console computers. You have a power supply in here. These power supplies can come in various uh, wattages. So um, some of these power supplies that have the uh, higher CPUs, the fancier, faster CPUs get hot. So you need to have a lot of current coming out of here. There's a big old monster cable coming out of here. One connector goes to this motherboard. There's another connector that goes a little bit off to the side. Where this fan is, there is a heat sink for the CPU that's underneath there. Some of the newer processor, I'll give you an example. The, the machine that I'm filming from uses an AMD Ryzen 9 and it has a, a heat sink about this tall and a big fan and the power supply in that machine is a lot bigger than this one, wattage wise, wattage wise handle it, it can push out more current in other words which translates into more heat probably right so anyways lots of cables coming out of here to different devices you may have um, maybe you have um, cd-roms or dvd burners or maybe some other internal hard drives maybe the older stall drives depending on what kind of connector they use like this is for the older hard drives and um, I'm going to try to, so this is for like the newer type of hard drives, the solid state drives, which I have one of these guys in here. And you can see that this is just plugged in with one of, let me find a connector for it, one of these guys in one side. And then this is the serial ATA cable that goes to the motherboard. What else is in here? Well, besides this wiring mess, you have your graphic card. In that uh, blue slot there, the graphics slot, and then down below it's kind of hard to see. But this is a wireless card uh, that plugs into a port really similar to this one. And in future videos, I'll be showing videos on how to replace some of these. Where you can go with, uh, let's say this card, this wireless card, you can see the antennas right here. This wireless card is an N and you want to switch it over to an AC. An AC uh, network card is a little faster than an N, for instance. They also have AX. That's at the speed your wireless is running. That, those are those funky letters that I just made mention. Okay, not important in this video, but anyways, I'll explain that in better detail when I get into that in the future. So more importantly, your motherboard sits in here. This is your RAM. Again, most of the time it's pretty easy to put these things in. And then again, get into your BIOS and double check those settings if you want. A lot of the, um, the 
motherboards nowadays with their uh, BIOS or basic input operating system will auto detect. If you don't feel comfortable doing that yourself, obviously get a friend or take it to the shop if you like. But I'm just giving you this as an example of um, two, two things. If you want to do this yourself or just generally wanting to know what this thing looks like inside your machines. Okay, this one happens to be 32 gigabytes. So you can imagine what the sticks are. You just divide that by four. All right, so again, my recommendation is buy them in pairs if you're gonna do it this way. If you buy a single stick, um, don't go and buy like a 16 and then three weeks later go buy another 16. You sometimes have incompatibility issues. Save your money. When you can buy them as a set, then buy them as a set if you're gonna do this. So on that note, folks, I will say, hopefully you have subscribed to Linux for Seniors. I have lots of videos, not only on this distribution, but others. And my library is growing on my new channel. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.